This is Father Joseph Anthony Cress. And this is Father Bonamantra Chapman. Welcome to God's Planning. Thank you to all of our listeners and viewers. And if you'd like to support us, please uh, do so through our Patreon. Uh, and the link is in our description and show notes. And um, yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this episode with those who you think will enjoy it. As we begin this episode, I have one quick announcement, and it's actually the first time we're able to announce this, so it's a very exciting announcement for us. That is that we have an upcoming live event. Uh, this event will be in Nashville, Tennessee on January 18th. So we will be doing a day of recollection in Nashville on January 18th. We ask you guys to please join us for that and uh, check out our website, godsplanning.org, for more event details on that, about specifically where we'll be and how to connect with us. But put it on your calendars. January 18th, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, that's yeah. great. All right. Um, have you ever been to Nashville? Have you ever been to Tennessee? I have. Does um, it scare you at all? Does it excite you? What yeah, are we talking about? Uh, I like Nashville. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My sister lived down there for uh, for a little bit of time, so I visited during that time. And then mm -hmm. I've been to the uh, mother house for the... Sisters of uh, Saint Cecilia's, the yeah, Nashville yeah, sisters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, been around that, and we've we visited. So, yeah, I like it. It's a nice, it's a pleasant town. Yeah. 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 Well, unfortunately, this episode is not about the Smoky Mountains, or, or anything. fortunately, or, or fortunately, it's not about that. Yeah. But we are talking about uh, fear, mm -hmm. and specifically fear in the spiritual life. Yeah. But I think we encounter fears in a lot of different ways. Yeah. So um, let's just, uh, if you don't mind, cracking open the shell. Sure. And talk about your deepest fears. My what deepest are, fears. Yeah, what yes. are your deepest fears? You know, um, <laughs> phobias, fear, uh, uh -huh. not heights, um, but us. Uh, although I'm getting better about it, like spiders always freak oh, me out. Oh, really? You know, I yeah. just never, arachnophobia or whatever, I just, spiders, there's something about them, the little legs, and they're kind of just like the wrong proportions for legs because they're way too long for yeah. a small body. <laughs> and then they have a little fang thing. So I All did the it. eyes that they have. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I had a I had a tarantula growing up, so I had a spider. Um, but like in general, I just still today, we were out in the in um, the men's retreat and in one of the cabins, it was this giant wolf spider and the Ooh, thing's the size of like your, your fist basically. And yeah. It's uh. just still like you look at it and I just have, you have to let let you know you have to command the will like just use the use the intellect you know command it's mm -hmm. not the passions need to be drawn up into it in the sense of like this thing just doesn't know about you it doesn't care about it doesn't care about anything it's just like kind mm -hmm. of like it just wants bugs it's an organic rock it's whatever so it's that fine moves. So, yeah exactly yeah yeah so it's but it but there's something i don't know there's always something sinister about them so spiders are if you want to bother me um, then spiders are the thing. I you just don't get don't bothered like by much. Like, no, you're I don't, pretty, I'm pretty stable. stable guy, yeah, 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 and yeah. it's okay. Um, but like spiders do, there's just something about them that still mm. today, the first time I see one, it's not like I don't freak out, but right. I don't feel pleasant towards them. <laughs> you, do you have any, growing up, did you have any like, any, I, any, because phobias are weird because they're not rational, yeah. right? Yeah, and you don't like, I mean, some, sometimes there's like a traumatic event yeah. that like you can but be like, oh, like, yeah. but other times, uh, for me, it's snakes. Snakes. I that kind of standard. Well, yeah, but yeah. I, I spiders. hate snakes. Really? Like, yeah. There's nothing freak about. Out. Yeah, like, don't like there's them. Nothing. There's. We talk about being unnatural. It's like, how do you move like that? You don't have legs. I know. And yeah. The weird, like, you know, disconnect their jaw. And yeah. They're yeah. aggressive. And yeah, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not a snake guy. I was, um, I remember a, a few years ago, I was uh, golfing with a buddy of mine in uh, the mountains of Virginia. Yeah. And I had a beautiful shot into a par three, like stuck it probably like eight feet from the pin. I was super happy about it. And I walk over and there was like a big canyon between the two. And there's a, a walkway from where the golf cart path is to the green. And there was a snake lying across that cart. Yes. Path. And it, I was like trying to do the exact thing, like command the will. Like yeah. you can do this, like get the biggest club in your bag and kind of like shimmy him along the way. And I just couldn't do it. I just was, I, yeah. I, it, it took so much. And finally I like took the umbrella out of my bag and just slid it across the cart path, like over yeah. his back. Cause him, I, yeah. like I was throwing rocks at him or yes. anything. Yeah. And he finally like curled up and, and shot off the path and whatever. Yes. And I had taken a video and sent it to a few other friends and they uh, sent it back. They're like, father, that's a copperhead. Yeah. <laughs> like, be careful out there. Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And when we got back to the clubhouse at the turn, uh, we told like one of the workers, we're like, yeah, there was this, there was a copperhead on on hole three or what? He goes, hole three? Don't you mean 16? 
like, no, three. It's like, oh, another group just came in and said there was a big snake on the tee box of 16. I was like, what is this demon course? Like, snake, I, yeah. I never yeah, want to golf here golf. again. Like, yeah. never again. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I, I just, I, I cannot yeah, deal with Yeah, there's something all. about, and uh, we both picked up at least, a sort of unnaturalness. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know, maybe there are people that are afraid. I assume that the the traumatic ones are the ones that might be more like them have a natural object, but so there might be someone that's scared of deer, but I expect that might be because you had like an accident of the deer or something, but mm -hmm. no one looks at a deer and goes, Oh my gosh, that's freaking me out. Cause it's so weird. It's like, no, it's, it's got decent shape, whatever. It doesn't have like a weird thing about it. Yeah. Um, whereas like snakes with the slithering bit spiders, there's just something in, unproportional about them. Yeah. There's, it's we don't want to do a phenomenology of naturalism here, but there's some kind of <laughs> there's an unnaturalness to these kind of fears that's a natural response to unnaturalness. Maybe that's right. Yeah, and I, I think like a lot of these quote unquote common fears, like mm -hmm. they have that kind of thread to it. Like you know, somebody who's afraid of like peanuts. Yeah, it's like uh, okay. Yeah, there, we we might need. But like to heights, some... for instance, it's a natural yeah. thing to be averse to falling. Yes, and hitting the ground. You know, hitting the ground from height you know, distances. It's yeah. unnatural to be like splattered. Um, <laughs> unnatural so, to be splattered. Yeah. True. Yeah. Or, or true. flying, you might think it's unnatural to be going 300 miles per hour In a above metal clouds. Tube, like there's something, like, you know, yeah, about yeah. that. Like I don't, I was gonna say, I don't love flying. I'm not afraid of it, but I don't love flying either. Yeah. And there's something natural about just being that high mm -hmm. in the bizarre metal tube. You know, you're always looking yeah. thinking, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so we're, we're, we're kind of talking about fears in yes. this episode and uh there what we're kind of making reference to is here at the beginning is like there are different types of fear mm -hmm. you know but like how do yeah. we how do we understand yeah. that and is it just yes it's one it's the same word that we're applying sure. in all these areas yes. but like i think there are very radically different experiences of this and there yeah. and it should be so like how do we approach fear and and starting to look at the different types of fear that we're dealing yeah. with here. And this is this is good because again we use some of the same words that are mapped onto the concepts, um, but take on drastically different meanings yeah. depending on on relating to us. So for instance, uh, fear has a you could say a sub rational or mm. an animalistic mm -hmm. uh, naturalistic L component. But when we talk about fear in the spiritual life, of course, if it's to be in the spiritual life, it has to be aimed at spiritual things, which is the intellect and the will, the powers of the soul. Yeah. So, for instance, we wouldn't talk about, except in the most, you know, metaphorical sense, digestion in the spiritual life. Because digestion is a natural process that animals go through. We don't have to, I don't have to choose, like, mm -hmm. thankfully, I'm very happy about this. When I eat a piece of pizza, I don't have to then say, don't talk to me. I've got to digest. Now we might say like, "Don't talk to me." I'm, I'm like bothered, but it's not like I'm trying, thinking like, "Now push down, okay. keep going." Now enzymes attack in this way. <laughs> Digestion happens at a subrational, yeah, not so irrational, just subrational, animalistic okay. sense. In the same way, fear and anger, for instance, the emotions, okay, they have this subrational thing that we don't want to confuse with rational and therefore potentially sinful things. I know in the confessional, you probably have similar experiences. Um, if someone people confess, some sometimes people can confess their emotions. Oh, all the time as sins, mm -hmm. and there are parts of their emotions that are brought up into yes. the rational life that becomes sinful in terms of action upon. But part of the emotional life is just the subrational experience, right? Anger I mean, is a natural, yeah. neutral in a sense, physical subrational response to a reality yeah i mean i hear it all the time in the confessional and I, I know you do as well is like you know bless me father for i've said i felt angry or i felt jealousy or i felt it's like okay we're talking about feelings right yeah like yeah, yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna uh throw out the caveat or like preempt your sins with i felt yeah like that's kind of subrational yeah already you know, like, said, yeah you know, what you've revealed to me is that you haven't had any sin yeah, not necessarily. Like, I've got to dig and find out what like, do you mean? Now, did we take those feelings and now turn those into sins and actions and sure. words and things like that? Yeah. Then okay, we, but like that just basis, right? And I, I think this is important that you're bringing it up is like that kind of subrational like immediacy of yes. it. Like yeah, you don't control is, that. You don't get to dictate the origin of now. Now let's feel X. Yeah. Like it just is there. It happens, which is and which is a good. Because it's good that you feel angry if someone uh, treats you poorly or cuts yes, you off. Absolutely. Just, just like, for instance, it's good that you have fear of particular things. Unnatural things. Like, like for instance, splattering. Some, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fear of heights is not crazy. 
Uh, you, you could have an irrational Rational feel fear. of heights, yeah. but the sense of being averted when you get near a cliff or something, and all of a sudden you get a little bit woozy and you 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 fear a danger. Well, it's it might be a real danger, and therefore, mm -hmm. so fear has this sub rational response that sets the emotional system to say like, "Hey, buddy." It's like when you're driving a car now, and they have those sensors that when beep, something beep, beep. gets close, then it 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 lets you know. In a way, fear has this natural component, but of course, what we what we care about is fear in the spiritual life in the kind of rational fear, yes. the rational sense. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's going to be like fear in many respects is a proper response to, like you said, dangers or like we said, evil. Yeah. When right. evil presents itself to us, there's a certain unnaturalness to evil. Yep. And, and, uh, and there's a natural response to unnatural. So the natural things. response to unnatural things is fear. Yeah. And so that's okay. That's right. Yeah, to, yeah. but let's let's then like move mm -hmm. over into when we're talking about the rational fear yeah. within the context of spiritual life like yep is it just like yeah. a blanket look or is it well you green might, lights all the way what yeah. are we talking about with well this? you might think so i like this you've you pointed out the fear involving the evil thing or the evil potential the danger right and so the evil is there you might think well in the spiritual life how could well what are we talking about the evils and stuff is this like demons and saying no there are evils uh, to be avoided in the spiritual yes. life, yeah, and yeah, yeah. fear as as a as well. We'll talk about the gift later, but as a rational fear, as a capacity of the soul, um, has a dimension of responding to evils. Mm -hmm. And this is where there's a nice distinction that Saint Thomas makes. It's in the tradition, of course, um, but between servile fear mm -hmm. and filial fear. Okay. So think about we've moved past the kind of subrational fear as an emotion to now rational fear, fear as a spiritual activity, yeah. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. a human rational activity, and that means it can take two shapes, mm -hmm. so it still has the basic structure of a response to a perceived danger or right. evil, right. but now it has a sort of rational component, it's a higher level. And he talks about this, the tradition talks about this, and St. Thomas talks about this, in terms of the difference between a, mas a slave and his master, and a son and his father. And servile fear is the sense of a, that the fear that a slave has to a master mm -hmm. or servant, a mm -hmm. servile. And filial fear is the fear that a son has to his father. And okay. you might think, fine enough, but we, right. what's the real distinction here? Yeah. And this is where we'll do just a little bit of phenomenology. All right. Phenomenology, of course, is understanding things by looking at their acts, acts right. so their act character. So it's like the internal structure of something. And in servile fear, the fear of a, of a servant to a master, the fundamental fear is the fear of th him doing something to you. Okay. So think about it's the fear of the directionality of him to you. So the, he... You fear that servant fears the master because the master can punish, punish him. him. The evil, yeah. so the evil is punishment. I want to avoid that punishment. And I want to avoid the punishment, and he's the one who brings it. Right. So I fear him because he can bring evil to me by punishing me. It's towards mm -hmm. me. Now, with a son and a father, there is a fear there. Mm. There's a sense of there could be a danger of a punishment or an evil or a separation, but it's the other direction you fear that you will do something to him, hmm. bringing dishonor, bringing shame, disobeying, that will result in separation. Yeah, And that's, even though it's still a sense of fear, of a potential evil, of mm -hmm. separation, punishment, what have you, the directionality is who is the who is the one to be feared? Mm. In a sense, in servile fear, you fear the master because of what he can do to you. But in filial fear, you fear yourself doing something that will separate you from him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though, of course, it is the fear paid to him, and fear by a sense of reverence, we would even say in this case, to, the, to your father, you hold him in high esteem because of the fact that you could separate yourself from okay. his love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As opposed to the slave's fear is he can just come and do something to you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And that that gives, even though you use the same word for it, in a sense, we've got a whole different act. It's a very different disposition. That's right. It's a very different disposition, a very different act to say like, oh my gosh. And, and you can look at both the master and the father have a certain authority yeah. in, involved. So like, 
you can see this dynamic is at play when there is a kind of an authority they can punish, they can judge, structure, they can, yeah. you know, authoritarian yeah. regime and, and things like that. But it is that, that directionality is so key to understand the difference uh, and the distinctions between servile and, and filial fear is that like in that servile fear is like I fear because I will be punished. Right. And this person has the authority to inflict punishment, to inflict pain, to inflict evil in my life in that way. Um Whereas w with the the father issue and the and the filial fear is, I fear inflicting pain on him. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I I fear inflicting the dishonor in that yeah. in that I reverence his appropriate role in my life, even being an authority, but recognizing that even in me in my lowly stance, mm -hmm. I am not just the object of pain and punishment or success and productivity, but in my lowly stance, I participate in his good name. Yeah. I participate in his authority and I can tarnish that. Yeah. And I fear the the evil that is there is tarnishing and uh, damaging yeah. him because of my lowly actions or things like that. Yeah. And then we take one more, we'll take one more turn of the screw on Let's this keep guy going. and ramp it yeah. up. So we move yeah. from emotions to this kind of rational stuff, the serv servile and the filial fear. Now we're going to take filial fear and say we need to purify our natural conception mm -hmm. of that with the Father. Because for instance, with God, we can't hurt him yeah. by our by our actions. Our sins don't hurt him in a real way. He's disappointed, yeah. you know, sort of thing we the metaphor but like you're not going to kill God, right? <laughs> um, you're not going to punish Unless God, Nishi, right? right? But we do, yeah. But we do fear. We fear uh, hurting our relationship with Him, of being outside of Him, because mm -hmm. uh, that relationship is a is an act of love between the two of us. And so, in the filial fear, which is so important in the spiritual life to develop, not the fear of punishment in the sense that he's the the master who I just need to follow this, 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 and therefore he won't punish me. Mm -hmm. This is in the confession we talk about imperfect contrition, yeah. the fear of the pains of, of hell oh. and the loss of heaven. Uh -huh. But the ideal is to move to contrition, perfect contrition, I mm -hmm. should say, where you fear that you've offended him, offended, not hurt, offended in terms of that he's deserving all love and you have not given that to him. Right. And that has caused and will cause a separation as a certain damage, For, in there. exactly yeah. the damage of the relationship, right. and this cultivating this sense of of fearing your loss of that relationship because of your sinfulness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is where now fear is taken up rightly because the object of the fear of the reverence him he is not he is not someone who is a, a punishing master he is a loving merciful savior right. and lord. But there still is a potential evil involved in separating ourselves from him in sin, so there has to be fear, but the fear is because of our own possibilities mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So it has the same structure, but now purified of its even the father-son relationship, mm -hmm. and now can be taken up in an assistance in growing in virtue. And, of course, uh, it's not just our own efforts here, yeah. but, of course, in confirmation you receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and one of the gifts is fear of the, the Lord. Lord. Right, right. So before we dive into that, though, I want I want to mm -hmm. push just a little further. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon though this this whole concept of uh, filial fear, uh, especially with respect to God and our relationship with Him. For some people, that may be a new concept. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, because they're like. I'm looking about or thinking about my natural uh, relationship with my father, and yeah. it was very servile. Oh like, yeah, sure. I don't have a concept of mm -hmm. reverencing somebody yeah. in such a relationship, yeah, that's fair. and I definitely don't have that towards God. Yeah, so, like, sure. is servile fear bad in our spiritual life? <laughs> Do we should we eliminate that? Should I should I be then punishing myself? Mm because I have a certain servile fear. Oh, yeah. Or can I get question, past yeah. that? Yeah. Like, how do, well, how do, how do I, you deal with it? Obviously, filial fear is where we want to be. Oh, yeah. But if I'm not there right now, sure. and maybe I'm I'm 1,000% in the servile camp. Like, yeah. how do I get out of that? What do I do? Yeah. Do I get out of it? Like, Well, what, the what, trick is, of course, I mean, one of the analogies here that works is shifting the... We all know. We all know, in a sense, the fear of of a, a slave to a, a vicious master. We have mm -hmm. a sense, even though we haven't experienced that, we, we have some. We have a sense of what that is, so we understand that one. But if, for instance, the son and the father, ideally, you've had a good relationship in some fashion with with your father. If you haven't, then that doesn't 
then that analogy doesn't hold. And so it's harder to boot up into filial harder, fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a matter of thinking of, um, if it's not the son of the father, it's a matter of that, like the 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 other person of reverence mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who you don't want to lose relationship. So it might be that, you, think about it with a spouse, for instance, who you don't want to break a relationship with and you fear actually hurting the relationship right. with that person by shame or it might be even like a boss or it might be some, some authority figure someone who is in reverential position mm-hmm. for some period of time and the difference between worrying that that person is going to punish you and for the difference of worrying that you will be punished because of how you have acted yeah, yeah. but not so much from the actual person punishing you coming to you but because of how you've done it mm-hmm. so that's the first point the second point is there of course it's all mixed, right? Imperfect, yeah. imperfect contrition in the confessional works. Yeah, I was just, just going to say, it's, it's legitimate. Fine. Perfect contrition is what you're shooting for, but obviously, because these are connected, because the fear of hell and loss of heaven are real, and in both cases, they're the, the, it's yeah. not like you, for, it's not like once you get to perfect contrition, you don't care about heaven or hell. No. Right? They're still realities. Mm-hmm. So, they're imperfect contrition and a sense of, of fearing, fearing God out of reverence, partly because of his awfulness in the sense of he's Terribly, oh, yeah. he's terrible in the sense that he's powerful, yeah. in the sense he's mighty, all this kind of stuff. That's all true. And because of our sins, we might fear that of punishment, okay? Mm-hmm. But he's asking us, and this is with the cross and the incarnation, to come in and say, move. move I want you to be, that. I no longer call you slaves or servants, doulos, but I call you friends. Yeah, yeah. Slaves don't know what their master is doing, but I call you friends. Mm-hmm. He's moving us from servile fear to filial fear if we can do it. Yeah. But he'll he'll help. And I think it's it's good to recognize that there's a certain legitimacy to the servile fear and understanding the kind of consequences and the punishments that are at play. You should but fear being punished. Exactly. So it's yeah. like we don't want to like totally blot that out, but like yeah, that's definitely that's not our destination. So yeah. it's like okay if we begin there. Yes. But like we have we to We probably move. have to. We have to, you yeah. know. And I think that understanding too in the confessional is like imperfect yeah. contrition um you know, um, attrition is 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 there for a reason, and it's valid for a reason. Yeah, it's sufficient. It's sufficient. Yeah, but we want to move that. So let's then jump to the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is which there's is related, a specific right? gift. Like yeah. out of all of them, there's like this thing. Fear of the Lord is actually given a name, and it's specified as a real gift. So yeah, break I like that this. I'll, I'll just start this because you have uh, a lot of experience with this uh, talking about these issues as well. But um, so the gifts, you get sense of the natural. If we go this way, the natural is the the sub rational kind of thing. It's like not even us doing it. Yeah. And we've talked about how we're engaged in doing things. Right. And now we go to the other extreme where the gifts are the Holy Spirit is the one doing. We're being pulled by Him. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, it's returning to the sub rational in a way where you're being pulled, but now it's being pulled by. The super rational, super rational by the, yeah, by, the, the by the by God, supernatural. Exactly. So it's now a supernatural fear in this in the truest sense that makes us who we ought to be. Um, so that's that's the fear of the Lord, and it has you get this in, in confirmation when you're it, there's even some symbols and signs that marked with this um, that it's the Holy Spirit who gives us this yeah. ability to yeah, fear yeah. Him correctly uh-huh. to move us from servile to filial. It's not all in our analogies. Yeah, and I think with that understanding, once again, we're talking about the supernatural above mm-hmm. our nature, right? And that fear of the Lord that's given to us supernaturally is rooted in something else that is also extremely supernatural, which is our baptism, Yeah, right? Yep. What happens in our baptism? We are made sons and daughters of God. Yeah, fili- filiation. Filiation. Yes. We are creatures. We should not be the yeah. heirs to divinity, Yeah. right? You should so, be slaves, not friends. Exactly. But yet this is the great gift that is given to us in in Christ in in then um showered upon us in the baptism. And so what happens then is this supernatural fear is that of filial fear, mm-hmm. right? It is the appropriate fear to sons uh in to their fathers. Yes. Right. So this whole mark that like I, Unless we had the Christian dispensation, like we could never get to filial fear with yeah, God. Yeah, that's right. We'd, 
Yeah, you just have survival fear. Because pagan religions have this sort of thing. Right. You know, which you've, you're, you're basically bartering and trading with God. You're trying to yeah. appease the deity so that they don't punish you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Which we still have, and as again, as you say, we grace built upon nature. So right. there's still a sense of sacrifice and appeasement language. And you and even talk yeah, about some yeah. of the mystics, but it's always it's aiming for a higher purpose, being drawn up, just like our passions being drawn up by our reason. So far, so is survival fear drawn up into filial fear. 1,000%. So like this gift of the Holy Spirit that is fear of the Lord is precisely filial fear. Yeah. Because there's no concept of that in our human nature towards the divine outside of the grace of God uh, in the Christian dispensation. That's right. And yeah. so like that's radically important to see that. And we see this expressed in a few ways, right? Mm -hmm. uh, precisely in the sacramental life in confirmation. Uh, confirmation being the sacrament that is the completion of what began in us in um, in baptism. But Aquinas talks about a really beautiful thing. He says, why is the confirmandi anointed on the face? Why are mm -hmm. they anointed on the forehead? Yeah. And he says, well, because the face betrays us. Mm -hmm. it, it goes pale in fear mm -hmm. and it blushes in shame. Yeah. And so recognizing that and he says that the face is anointed so that the spirit can help us overcome those two responses mm -hmm. in um yeah. both fear and shame and so when we're talking about this like thinking through all these implications and thinking through all the conversation that we've had is the fact that the holy spirit in this supernatural gift of the spirit giving us filial fear overcomes this kind of subrational response to fear and shame, mm -hmm. but also that kind of servile fear where we just simply fear the punishment and it gives us his very spirit to kind of um, temper or actually overcome those natural responses and, yeah. and subnatural responses so that we can act as supernatural mm -hmm. um, children him. of God. Yeah. I think this this ties back into the what well, we started in the very first part about the unnaturalness yeah. of of fears and the subrational thing, because at the end of the day, um, you know, God created us for to live with Him forever yeah. in heaven, and that hell is an, in a way not our natural destination. Our no. in a sense we are meant for heaven. Now, of course, it gets complicated about how exactly we're meant for heaven in this way, but He He desires the salvation of all. He doesn't desire the salvation of some. He desires <laughs> salvation of all, all. Yeah. and then works out his his providence and his predestination in particular ways. But hell is, in a sense, it's not only evil, but there's something not quite right about it. Mm -hmm. It's only right mm -hmm. sec secundum quid. It's only right secondarily. Yeah. It's not like he created so that you could have hell. Um, so even as so as we talk about the fears have this kind of, you fear something's evil because of it has sort of an inappropriateness or disjointedness or not quite right fittingness. So too, the the gift of the fear is is there to get us to heaven, to help yeah, us sit into yeah. heaven, because there's something unfitting mm -hmm. and unnatural in a way about uh, about being separated from God forever, because He made us for Himself. Right, right. Well, I think that is the kind of uh, I don't know final word of of hope and encouragement. Yeah, that fear it, is know, a good thing. Yeah, not only like, in the natural level of protecting us from particular evils, mm -hmm. but also in this filial fear in the sense of yeah. protecting us from separation from God both in this this physical life and in the spiritual life like yeah. fear it's okay like are you afraid yeah 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 I am yeah but in the in the best sense yeah so so to all of our listeners uh, and viewers, thank you uh, for tuning in to this episode of God's planning please uh, follow us on all of the social media platforms because um, we're we have accounts on all of them so please follow us. Like, comment, and subscribe, uh, and please leave a five-star review uh, wherever you are listening or watching this episode. Uh, if you'd like to support the podcast, please do so through our Patreon page. The links to that Patreon page are in the description or the show notes of this episode. Uh, and you can also follow the links in the description and show notes to our website to check out God's Planning merch. We have a whole uh, new merch store, so there's a lot of fun things out there. So you can uh, rep the God's Planners wherever you are. 
Uh, that is us. We are the Godsplainers. I guess I just made that up. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also follow that link uh, to our website to find out about upcoming events. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we have an upcoming event in Nashville, Tennessee, a day of recollection coming up on January 18th. So please uh, follow the link in the description to our website to find out more details on that event. And as always, know we're praying for you and please pray for us. God bless. Father Bonaventure. If you had the choice between holding a toad and subscribing to a YouTube channel, what would you choose? Subscribe to a toad holding a YouTube channel. Oh my gosh. Please subscribe to a toad holding a YouTube channel, especially if it's ours. Cheers.